about to give them what they want. I don't think they're ready for this, though. Beast mode. 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 What's good, YouTube? You know who it is. Chris Jones representing Palm Chasers. And speaking of Palm Chasers, go to TigerFitness.com and get your Palm Chaser stuff. Hold on, hold up. There that creatine is. Get your Palm Chaser stuff at TigerFitness.com. Make your next move your best move. And also, if you like this hoodie, guys, I'm wearing a size medium, by the way, if you happen to give a fuck. If you're about that life, and you want one of these Bop That Life hoodies, head on down to BeastMode316.com. Ding! All right, homies and homemates. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about training philosophy. As you may or may not know, I love philosophy. People like Niccolo Machiavelli. All right. Marcus Aurelius. Plato. Rene Descartes. The list goes on. Philosophy. I love philosophy, but let me tell you what I also love. I love training philosophy. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to talk a little bit about training philosophy. Let's talk about squat substitutions. So if you follow me on Instagram, I literally just posted a video on my reels and in my story sharing cable goblet squats. Okay, This is one of my favorite exercises to do to finish off legs. Okay, especially when I'm cutting down. Okay, now I got a couple of DMs of people asking me, is this exercise a good substitute for squats? Keyword, I said goblet squats. Whether you choose a dumbbell or a cable, I like them as a finisher, not necessarily as a squat substitution. Now, if you're somebody that works out from home, you know, you just want to be fit or some shit like that. You don't necessarily uh, have bodybuilding aspirations. I guess you can do uh, goblet squats as a squat substitution. You know, goblet squats are better than no squats at all. But if you're here and you want bodybuilding based knowledge, you have bodybuilding based aspirations, you want that whole ready physique, you want to turn your physique into a work of art. You want the wide back to get the holes in the sack. The V taper, they make the holes want to rape you. I'm talking those steel tries that steel wives. I'm talking quads of the gods, quads for the broads. Then absolutely not. You can't cheat this game. You gotta put in some real work if you want real results especially if you're doing this shit without steroids. Now, I'm going to give you two good squat substitutions, but before I do, let me explain real quick why I don't think goblet squats are a good substitution for squats. Think about it. We do squats as a way to load the legs with heavy weight. Okay? Now, if you're doing something like a goblet squat, let's say for an example, you're doing a hundred pound goblet squat with a dumbbell. In my opinion, that's pretty a good amount of weight right there. That's a pretty good amount of weight. A hundred pound goblet squat. Think about it. You have two legs, right? That's only 50 pounds of weight for each leg. Now, if you're squatting and you're doing 200 pound squats, that's literally 100 pounds each leg. There's a reason why squats build more mass than the goblet squat because this, just, let's just keep it simple you're able to put more stress more load on the legs with the heavy compound movement especially if you got good technique and good form and good mind muscle connection so that fact alone not able to load the legs with heavy weight proves that the goblet squat is not a good substitution for squats not only that, let's say you're using a 100 pound dumbbell or a 120 pound dumbbell and you got lower back pain. Like I've dealt with lower back pain since about 2017, 2018 guys. I went and got me an MRI 
and I had a L4, L5 bulging disc. So if you're somebody that's dealing with back pain or has dealt with back pain and you don't want to risk injury, think about it. You got to, you have to set that dumbbell up. You have to get that dumbbell off the ground or off the bench and then you got to set it up and then you got to brace your core and perform the movement. So if you got a lower back issues, that can aggravate your lower back. But let me tell you something. Doing the goblet squats last, you know, as a finisher, your legs are going to already be exhausted. Your legs are going to already be taxed. This is why it makes a great finisher. You don't have to go extremely heavy and you're still going to be able to add some more metabolic stress to the legs. And also, you can play around with your feet placements. Like for an example, you can go wide stance, outside shoulder width, with your toes out, right? Control the tempo and really tax the glutes a little more, right? Or you can go with more of a narrow stance. You can even elevate your heels. You can try adding some 10 pound or five pound plates on your heels, right? Elevate your heels a bit, narrow your stance and really work on that outer quad sweep a bit. You know, you can play around with your feet placements and tax different parts of your legs. And like I just said, you're already exhausted because you did your compound movements. You already done your squats. You've already done your leg press, etc. You can throw this as a finisher to make that light weight feel heavy. Doing goblet squats first as a, a squat substitution, you're not going to be able to put a lot of stress on the legs. Okay. So again, not trying to be the dead horse. I like goblet squats. I love it as a finisher, just not as a squat substitution. In my opinion, when you substitute an exercise for another exercise, the goal is to substitute it for an exercise that's going to give you similar results. If not similar results, very close. For an example, if my lower back is bothering me and I don't want to do bent over barbell rows, I do a chest supported T-bar row. Notice how the movements are different, but they're still going to give me similar results. And for the most part, I'm still going to be able to load my upper back with heavy weight. I'm not going to have to compromise the load. I'm going to save my lower back by going from bent over barbell rows to a chest supported T-bar row. That's my definition of substitutions. You want to substitute the exercise for something else that's going to give you close to the same benefits. Okay? Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to give you two exercises. I could give you about four or five, but don't want to make the video too long. I'm going to give you two substitutions that you can do to replace the squat for whatever reason. There could be several reasons for why you want to replace the squat. Let me give you two substitutions for the squat. All right, so the first substitution I recommend to replace squats for whatever reason is step ups. I think step ups is a great substitution for squats. Assuming you do reps, assuming you do moderate weight for reps, Step ups is a great substitution for squats. Let me tell you why. For one, you're not directly loading the spine. When you're doing exercises like a front squat with a barbell or a back squat with a barbell, great movement for the legs, by the way, but you're directly loading the spine. So if you're somebody who's dealing with some kind of back issues and you want to take a break from directly loading the spine, especially directly loading the spine with heavy weight, step ups will be a great substitution for you. You're able to reach hip flexion and you're able to extend at the knee under load. So you're gonna really be firing those quads. You're able to reach hip flexion and you're able to extend at the knee against resistance. This is gonna really foul those quads. And you can play around with the height. Like you can go with a higher platform, right? And you can get a deeper stretch, right? The higher the step up, the more range of motion, the deeper degree in hip flexion you can reach. Myself personally, I don't do crazy deep uh, step ups. For me, hips 
parallel with the ground is just fine. But again, you have the option to go super high to get deeper degrees of hip flexion if you choose to. That's going to really tax those glutes a little more. All right. So you have options to go a deeper degree of hip flexion. And again, you're able to tax those legs without directly loading at the spine. That's two great benefits right there. And like I said, if you're somebody who does squats for reps with moderate weight, let's say for an example, you like to do front squats with 200 pounds, right? Think about it. If you can do step ups with 50 pounds in each hand, if you could do step ups with 50 pounds in each hand, right? That's a hundred pounds total. When you do one leg at a time, each leg is going to use 100 pounds of resistance. Each leg is pressing against 100 pounds of resistance. Think about it. 50 pounds in each hand, one leg at a time. Each leg is pressing against 100 pounds of resistance. If you're doing a front squat or a back squat with 200 pounds in the bar for 10 rep sets, think about it. That's two legs moving at the same time. That's 100 pounds each leg. So think about it. If you're able to do 50 pounds each hand on a step up, that's going to give you pretty much the same amount of resistance without loading the spine. I know people that can do 80 pound step ups each hand. That's 160 pounds each leg, which, the, which is the equivalent of a 320 pound squat. See, see what I'm getting at here? If you can do 60 pounds each hand, that's 120 pounds each leg. That's the equivalent of squatting 240 pounds because if you're squatting 240 pounds, that's technically 120 pounds each leg has to squat. You see what I'm getting at here? The step up is a great substitution for the squats. You're going to be able to tax those quads without directly loading your spine. So if your lower back is giving you any issues, this is going to be a great way to give your lower back a break and still be able to hit those legs pretty hard. Now also, take a look at this photo right here. Look at this physique. This is whole ready. This is my definition of what a whole ready physique looks like. Now this guy died, Bobby Pandor. Bobby Pandor died in 1920. Steroids didn't come out till 1935. So this physique was developed without the use of steroids. Now look at his legs. Although they're not huge, I think it's fair to say his legs look good. Look at those glutes. He built his physique without steroids and he built his legs without squats. Guess how he developed his legs? He developed his legs going upstairs and he would have weight attached to him. Going upstairs, the function is very similar to step ups. Which again, why I like doing step ups and when I'm cutting and I want to get a little more definition in my legs, I like to throw in Stairmaster. That's a whole other topic for a whole other video. But the point I'm trying to make is step ups is a great movement to substitute for your squats. So let me get to my second substitution. The second exercise that I feel will make a great substitute for squats is the hack squat machine. Now, this movement does place a little load on the spine, but since you're on a machine with a fixed path of motion, you're able to squat deep without having to worry about stabilizing the spine. And when I say stabilize the spine, I mean stabilizing laterally side to side. You don't have to worry about stabilizing your spine laterally from side to side because the machine is on a fixed path. You know how a train has tracks for the wheels of the train to go along? That's exactly how the hack squat is. That sled is on a fixed path. So you don't have to worry about stabilizing your spine side to side laterally. And also a good thing about the hack squat is, notice the hack squat has a platform for you to press your feet off of. 
And these platforms are typically about 45 degrees. Now this 45 degree platform is going to allow you to get deep into the squat and not have to worry about your ankle mobility. Guys, ankle flexibility is a huge crucial factor in squatting, especially free weight squatting. So when you're using the hack squat platform, that 45 degree platform is gonna make it to where you don't have to worry too much about the ankle flexibility. And also, your upper back is against a pad. You have pads on your shoulders, right? And you're pressing against that platform it's going to make it easier to brace your core. Core bracing is another crucial fact for squatting. And I believe that's one of the reasons why so many people get hurt with freeway squatting. People are forgetting to brace the core and of course form. Too much long ball rounding on the way up, you must maintain spinal integrity when you're freeway squatting. That's a crucial factor of squatting. Ankle mobility and bracing that core. Notice the platform is 45 degrees. You don't have to worry too much about the ankle mobility. And you're pressing against a platform. Your upper back is against a pad with shoulder pads. It's going to make it easier to brace your core. And being able to brace your core is huge because notice how I just mentioned. I just mentioned the spine being stable laterally, right? Being able to keep your spine stable laterally. Well, remember, front to back. That's where the rounding happens. So the spine not only has to be stable side to side, but it has to be stable front to back. And when it's not stable front to back, that's when people round at the lumbar spine, lower back pain. So again, the hack squat is going to make it easier for you to keep your core braced so you can maintain spinal integrity. Also, the platform is 45 degrees. That's going to help with your ankle mobility. So you're going to be able to squat deep, no problem. Assuming you don't have any knee issues. Now, you still have to brace your core on a hack squat. You feel me? But not as much as you would have to brace it doing a freeway squat. You know, being able to use this machine is going to make it a little easier to brace your core. You still got to use your mind to maintain some spinal integrity. Notice a lot of people who use the hack squat, they still wear their belt. So you're not completely off the hook. All I'm saying is, it just makes it a little easier to keep your core stable. It makes it easier to maintain spinal integrity. And of course, you're not gonna be rounding your back like you would on a freeway squat. So on a hack squat, all you literally have to do is make sure your feet are properly placed for your body type. Find your feet placement that's right for you. Keep your core braced and just focus on your legs. Everything else takes care of itself. All you gotta do is put your feet in the right place, keep your core braced, and just focus 100% on your legs. So these are the two substitutes that I recommend. Like I said, I could've gave you four or five, but don't wanna make the video too long. These are two substitutes that I like for substituting squats. The step ups and the hack squat machine. Both are great substitutions. Well anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, be sure to give me a like, be sure to give me a comment, and spread the love. Share with a friend. Put your boy out there, you feel me? If you fuck with your boy, put your boy out there. Don't forget to like my shit, comment, subscribe, I holla back at your boy. Peace. What's good, homies and homets? What's good, Fit Fam? It's your boy, Chris Jones, representing Pump Chaser Subs. And when I'm going to the gym, first thing on my mind, the first thing on my mind is that pump. Chasing that sweet pump. But when you want that pump, you gotta grind for it. Bam! Pump and grind pre-workout. Look, look no further. You're looking for a good pre-workout to get you in the gym, to get you in the zone, to get you in that head space, look no further. Very well formulated, and you will not be disappointed. Three flavors to choose from. Stop what you're doing right now, and get 30, 30 bottles minimum. Bam. <laughs>